Lisa Ellis is a certified star in the entertainment industry. This Washington, D.C. native has had a hand in developing some of the greatest contemporary artists of today. More than a trailblazing executive, Lisa is also a mentor and activist. Lisa Ellis on this episode of Leading Women. I would say she's hardworking. Uh, she's a great networker and, and manager of relationships. Beautiful, smart, incredible, talented, spiritual. An incredibly smart, um, ambitious uh, business executive uh, who has just made her mark in the music industry. I really thought I was going to either be a journalist or an author as a kid. And then I, I grew up, I went to school in Columbia, Maryland, went to the University of Maryland. She wasn't like a comical type of person or personality, but she enjoyed everything she did. I actually worked for a, a entrepreneur and publisher named Earl Graves. And I had gotten a job offer to go work for Infinity Broadcasting, which is CBS Radio. I worked at WPGC and in, in Infinity Broadcasting for a couple years, doing a lot of community relations, event planning, marketing in that region of the country. Did a lot of regional marketing with Reebok, and they offered me a job to come and be a marketing manager for them. So I joined Reebok um, in 1993. I ended up working with some, you know, athletes, and um, that was great. And I, you know, got to meet and work with Shaquille O'Neal and establish a relationship with him through Reebok. And it really kind of permanently put me, pushed me towards entertainment marketing. I was at the MTV Awards. Um, in 1995, and I met this, a senior vice president at Columbia Records. He said, well, um, Jay, who was my former employer, tells me that you're considering going back into radio, and I think you should go into the record business. And I said, that doesn't mean one of those people that comes into the radio station and begs us to play the records, does it? And he goes, that's exactly what it is. I said, never. I'm not begging Jay to play my records. And it became kind of a joke. But regardless, you know, about 90 days later, I was working at Columbia Records. And um, I started as a regional promotion manager and I was doing pop and rock. And at the time, someone who was black and a woman and young, you know, doing pop and rock promotion was just, it didn't exist. It's funny because when I eventually started doing black music, Everyone in black music thought I was actually, because I came from pop and they didn't know me, they thought a white person was coming in to do black music. I remember when she was um, over the urban music department, you know, it was good to have a woman over in that position having everybody in check. I've been now at Sony Music for um, 14 years, got to work with some great artists and, and that's always probably what makes it the best is that whether they're iconic and they've taught you something or there's been artists that you work with from the beginning and you grow together, that, that um, is always exciting. Lisa and I have worked on a number of things over the years. Um, she really is the mainstay at Sony. And so anytime there's an artist that puts out a video or an artist does a performance or works on the BET Awards, uh, we end up working together. I still you know, work with a lot of artists day to day and I still work on helping them um, make their records, market their records, promote their records on a global basis. Artists love working with her because they know um, she appreciates what they go through, she understands their point of view, while at the same time maintaining corporate responsibility. I want to think that she's my best friend, but I wouldn't probably be the only artist saying that. She's honest and forthright uh, and real, uh, and I think artists appreciate that in an executive. Wyclef Jean or John Legend or Terrence Howard uh, or Prince or those are artists that um, I work with that I've worked with for years. There's a long list of artists that I'm just so proud to have been a part of their career. You know, whether it's Destiny's Child and Beyonce, Kelly, Michelle, you know, Michelle Williams, 
she's got this great, exciting new album, you know, this many years into Destiny's Child. Year 2000 when I first joined the group and it was just a whirl whirlwind for me because I was meeting so many people that Beyonce and Kelly had known for years. So, you know, it was me catching up and, you know, meeting people and, and Lisa Ellis just stood out. You know, of course, because she was just so nice and just so down to earth and just so cool. 3-6 Mafia, you know, this southern hip-hop group out of Memphis, Tennessee that, you know, I met, you know, probably 10 years ago. You know, they won the Oscar for Hustle and Flow, which is how I met Terrence. And the, these are just all things that are my proudest moments in, in music. She came to the, went to the Oscars with us, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You could see her, they show her when she jumped up screaming. Yeah, she, she supported us to the fullest and um, she's done a lot. We really appreciate it. She's very enthusiastic about the artists that she supports, and so you always feel more secure when she's in your corner because you know she'll fight for you. There's a lot of people in the office, you probably call, 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 leave messages, and they will never call you back. She will call you back, and she'll just tell you the real. She's one of the reasons that Destiny's Child is huge, that John Legend is, is the star that he is. Uh, she worked with John Legend way before his first record came out. She was one of the main people that uh, has you know been around and, and been with me and been an advocate for me from the from the very beginning. Girl, I'm in love with you. This ain't the honeymoon. Past the infatuation phase. She's provided an environment for him to grow, but at the same time really be himself. Uh, so I think she understands artists. She loves. She's a lover of music. John Legend and on his first album when. A lot of people didn't really get him initially to have it co come out and be so critically acclaimed and to have eight Grammy nominations on that first album and tied for the most nominations with Mariah Carey and Kanye West. That was a highlight, but there's tons of them, you know, the Fugees. And I remember getting in one of my biggest fights with a program director in Baltimore, Maryland about them and their music because it was these live instruments to hip hop and the guy plays a guitar and the girl, she's really great, she's a singer and then there's another rapper, I don't really get it. And then to have that still be the biggest hip hop album of all time. When it comes to as far as like rebranding, re reinventing and making it stick and making it relevant to the consumer, uh, it's a natural gift that she's born with. Here's how I can describe how well Lisa Ellis does her job. She was the one who got the Fugees back together for the BET Awards. I never thought when I was, you know, working nappy heads or vocab back in 19, you know, 94, 95, that I would be sitting with them in 2006 after they've broken up and all kinds of things have happened. And that I would be that person that's like on being interviewed going, so tell us about the highlights of your musical career. Like I never thought I would be that person. My sense of Lisa is that she's a strong business executive. Uh, she understands uh, the industry, she understands what works. I grew up, I was in a, in a, in a um, interracial, biracial family. My father's black, my mother's white. My dad worked for the government and my mom was a nurse. She grew up intermingling and having close friends from all different countries. I wasn't torn between two worlds. I think other people at times wanted you to be torn between two worlds. And so they were always trying to point out the differences to me. I always identified with being you know, black, and you know, even though my mother was not, she always encouraged us to embrace being who we wanted to be. My brother was born in Washington, we were born in DC, and then we moved to the suburbs, you know, younger age. And then we lived there for several years, and then my parents got divorced when I was 10. After her father and I were divorced, you know, she had to be independent. But I think, in a way, maybe it was to her benefit 
you know, like later on in life. Suddenly you're in a single family household as a pair of one and you're being split between two parents and all that. And that becomes, you know, a little complicated. But again, it made, I think it, I wouldn't be the person who I am if I didn't get through that. My mom's always looking at some kind of activity to occupy our time. When she was a teenager, her friends were riding and showing horses, so she wanted to do the same. My love for horses came more or less from my mom. My mom grew up on the farm that my grandmother lived on. I grew up going to my grandmother's house for every holiday, more or less. It was about a six hour drive from, from Washington in rural Pennsylvania. I have a lot of respect for Lisa, and I think as she's developed in her adult life, I've learned from her. I really admire what she's done, and I love her to death. She's, she's a wonderful daughter. Through my early, particularly my earlier part of my record career, I was always being challenged to kind of prove both sides of, my, of who I was. It's like, why is she working a Who record? You know, why is she working Alice in Chains? She doesn't know anything about classic rock or rock or alternative music. Or It's like, actually, that's not true. And you're assuming that. And then, you know, later, you know, um, initially it was like, oh, well, she's been doing pop and rock. Why should, why should she come now and do black music? I never felt like I had to go out of my way to prove myself um, because I just had to do it the way I had to do it because if I did it the way other people did it, if I did it a way, the way a white man did it in my business, I would fail because I'm not a white man. You know, if I did it the way every boss I ever had did it, I would fail because they be, play to different roles than I play. The music business is sort of unique in that there are a lot of, uh, relative to other corporate jobs, there are a lot of black executives, uh, relative, relatively speaking. Um, but even still, I think it's much harder for a woman to to be at the top of a record label and you have to be pretty tough and tenacious. I think when she walk in the room, dude's gonna be like, man, is he hot, is he hot? And then she starts to speak and they're like, wow, she got a brain, we have a problem here. You have to have a diverse perspective and representation in order for the artists, you know, the people that work at the companies to be diverse and, and representative of that. The business is going through an evolution and the contributions that everyone puts together makes a mosaic. And a mosaic has all kinds of colors and it has all kinds of textures and it has all kinds of taste levels and, and influences. And you just hope that you can scratch the surface enough to give it another dimension. She started out, you know, um, uh, at a relatively uh, junior level and have ri has risen to the, real, to the top of the label. Uh, and I think it just shows her uh, tenacity and her um, will to be successful uh, even as a, as a black woman in this industry. She's definitely a role model to young girls. Maybe if they don't even want to be in the music industry, but just the fact, you know, uh, uh, being a woman of power in whatever industry you want to be in, you can definitely look to Lisa Ellis. Box 388 became what I called a blog that I started when I was mentoring some girls in New York City. And there was this, there was this group of girls that they were just flooding my email at work with questions about life, questions about growing up, questions about school. When I went to see them, I would say, you guys, you can't email, like send me a hundred emails a day to my work, ad like you're flooding my work address. So they said, well, start a blog. So the irony was I started Lisa at LisaEllisOnline.com because of these girls. And it was for a long time, they were the only ones that knew that email existed. And so I ended up naming it Box 388 because that was like my earliest 
you know, memory of communicating with people. I think she would be a role model to show what hard work and persistence can achieve. I think it's really important for executives of any kind at any company, um, no matter what level you're at, to be a mentor, particularly giving a lot of women chances because, you know, I'm in a business where, you know, there's not women at, on a senior level. And, you know, when I was running, you know, a particular division at Sony, when I was running Sony Urban, I was really happy that my head of promotion was a woman and my head of media was a woman and my head of marketing was a woman. I think it's also very healthy as a leader in mentoring to have diversity in the, in the workplace and to have different perspectives and to not be threatened by that. I would still want to be able to mentor a white guy the same way I could a black girl because it's not about you're like me so I'm gonna mentor you to be exactly the way I am. It's about teaching, it's about people learning and giving people opportunities and having them believe in themselves and able to get to that place. When I worked at Pepsi, you know, Earl was so engaged in, in nonprofit and giving back to the communities that I ended up constantly, you know, helping schools, sponsoring things in schools beyond just our, my job description. I just get involved in things that make me feel good and those could be, could be, you know, working with, you know, an artist that has a foundation and helping them you know, reach their goals and helping them get media attention for it. When's the last time you physically landed on the ground and got bitten by mosquitoes, you know what I'm saying? She, she talks, she talks the talk that she walks. Well, I helped put together a, a press conference for Wyclef Jean's Together for Haiti, and that was really gratifying because it was very complicated and difficult for he and his foundation, Yale, to to get the funding to, to deal with the food crisis in his native country. We work very closely together with LifeBeat, the music industry organization, to help uh, prevent AIDS, fight AIDS. Um, also, uh, she's very involved with Girl Scouts. The Girl Scouts gave her an award uh, this year, so she really takes her um, uh, responsibility and her ability to give back uh, very seriously. I'm, I'm on the board of One by One, which is another foundation. Um, based out of Canada that is launching in the U.S. this fall. And again, it's one by one helping a person one by one, a child one by one, that is affected by, you know, world hunger, world, the crisis in water supplies around the world, the crisis in extreme poverty. Here's a woman who has multiple charitable outlets. I mean, life beat, one by one. She's involved with the UN on various missions that she goes on. She's not someone who's gonna come back and announce it to the world. Lisa, what she will do is she will try to encourage other people's involvement. Some people are able to clearly define who they are and, and know who they are. And, and I clearly know who I am, and I think that person has remained the same through, through many years. Lisa's accomplishments are being able to have the level of success that she's had and still be the type of person that she is. People in the political sector, you know, she deals with them, the actor sector, the music sector, the charity sector, and putting that in. So when you speak of the name Lisa Ellis, you're talking about a 360 brand. She was ranked number three on Billboard's Most Influential Women in 2006 and in 2007. Not very many women have that distinction, particularly at her age. That I could look back 30 years from now and go, you know, I was there the day John Legend auditioned at the label. So I was there when he won his first Grammy. I was a part of the score, seeing the Fuji, the biggest selling hip hop album of all time. I got to work with, you know, every artist from, you know, Mariah Carey. I got to work on Tony Bennett projects. And, you know, th that's, that's pretty, you know, exciting. Lisa Ellis makes everyone feel like it's a personal, Thing. 
every artist has a personal relationship with her. It's astonishing that uh, she could be at one label, at one organization for well over 10 years. I mean, that really says something to how much value she brings to Sony. She knows how to market. She knows how to manage relationships. She works hard. She's tenacious. She, she's going to be successful at whatever she wants to do. She's one of the highest ranking women in the music industry, um, and she's still a rising star. I'm a person that I never really feel accomplished, and that's a great thing. I think it keeps you in a place where you're, you can relate to anybody. And I think that it also puts you in a place where you're never, I don't want to use the word satisfied, but you're never, you know, satisfied. You really feel like there's more to do. I think I'm far too far away from what my contribution really will be and what my legacy will be. It's, it's, I think it's too early to call. It's kind of like the race that's halfway over, you know.